Okay, where are my... Uh... What did I do? Doctor, welcome back, guys, uh, to our next session. Okay, well, uh, okay, that's perfect. Good job, good job. Mm -hmm. um, exactly, it is. It's a verb. This is an adjective. Okay, so uh, a good job. Okay, so here uh, we started off by the positional phrase. Can someone tell me the difference between a phrase and a clause with me? A uh, phrase and a clause, again, very quickly. Kinsey, what is the difference between a phrase and a clause? Kinsey? Okay. How about now, the hand, please? Okay, go ahead, Hannah. Uh -oh, I'll Hi, everyone. Hi, Hi, Miss Lynn. Hi. Sorry, I'm a minute late. Hi, Miss Actually, Lynn. about two minutes late. <laughs> I had a little techno technology problem. How's everyone? No problem, Miss Lynn. Oh, thank fine. you. Fine. Okay. So today we're going to start with, I have a dream and we're going to uh, review the guiding, uh, the guided reading part one, okay? All right, who, uh, what was the occasion for this speech? Okay, Laura, what was the occasion? To end the uh, lecture. To end. I'm sorry, can you repeat it? To end racism. Does everyone agree? No, I just can answer. Okay, who said no? Offered? No, me, Adam. Okay, Adam, what was the reason? It was a march in Washington, D.C. Uh, by black men or uh, African Americans. Okay, can someone tell me what was the reason for this march? Hannah Hanny? To end racism and give the, the, the black the rights. Okay, does everyone agree? Okay, I need you to leave that question right there for a second. All right, you had to read the beginning of King's speech from, I am happy to join with you today to the part where it says long night too long night of captivity, okay? Let's go to number two. What metaphors does Dr. King use? He compares slavery to what? Salma? Uh, he compares sl slavery to... Uh, uh, I can't hear you, Salma. Uh, okay, one minute. Selma, can you hear me? Yes, just one minute, but okay. You know, Slyn. Slyn. Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, uh, I'm I'm saying he's comparing slavery uh, to fire and to flames of injustice. Okay, what's he uh, what about the Emancipation Proclamation to what? Um, to a great uh, people light of hope and slavery to a long night of uh, uh, captivity. A long night of captivity, okay. Read the paragraph that begins, but 100 years later, two finds himself in exile in his own land. And answer number three, four, and five. 
Hannah Hanning. Yes, Miss. Answer three, four, and five, please. Okay. Segregation, he meant by segregation, uh, it's isolated. It's what, um, Hannah? Isolated? Yes, isolated. Okay, what is discrimination? And this um, a judgical treatment? Yes. It's when you judge others, uh, you discriminate against them. In other words, you you will not allow them to do the same things that you do. In this case, the black man was not allowed the rights and the freedoms that the white man had, okay? And number five, what metaphor does Dr. King, uh, metaphors does Dr. King use? Um. Negro lives a lonely island of poverty. Okay. And manacles of segregation. <coughs> manacles, yes, of segregation. Anyone have anything to add to it? Thank you, Hannah. Welcome, Ms. Tim. Okay, read the following section which begins. And so we've come here today to dramatize a shameful condition and end with that will give us upon demand the riches of freedom and the security of justice. Faramala, would you answer, please? Um, Ms. Lynn. Yes. Uh, Ms. Ritej is telling you that uh, her network is very bad, so... Um... She will, uh, she will fix the problem uh, and, uh, will, uh, and she will end. Okay. Thank you, Farah. You're welcome. Okay, uh, Farah Mala, number yeah. six. Uh, he compares the declaration of independence to a promissory note and he compares the lack of freedom to a bad check. Okay. Bameko, number seven, please. Thank you, Farah. Uh, for emphasis, uh, for emphasis that it must happen uh, now. Yes, capital uh, now is capitalized for emphasis. It must happen now. Okay, we cannot wait any longer. Remember that. Uh, Abdella, what did what does gradualism mean? Uh, gradualism means, uh, is that good? Uh, it means, uh, like, uh, something slowly taking place. Okay. So, uh, what connection is gradualism with this speech, Abdullah? What is slowly taking place? Uh, I think uh, black people's uh, rights. Yes, right. the, the black people's right uh, for freedom and just their rights uh, in general. They have none at this point, okay? Yeah. It's happening too slow. Dr. King wants things to start now. Don't wait, okay? Thank you, Abdullah. You're welcome. All right, uh, and here, what does, uh, what metaphors does Dr. King use? Uh, Jenna Gouda? Yes, Ms. Lynn, give me a minute. Um, uh, number nine, the metaphors, yes. Yes. to cash a check. Uh, he means uh, the promise of justice and freedom. Yes. Does anyone have anything to add, yeah. Hannah? Thank you, Jana. Uh, I wrote about I wrote about the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. 
Okay, are you at number nine? Would you put? Can you hear me? Yes, for number nine. I put the, the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. Okay. Uh, anyone else put anything different? Ms. Lynn? Yes. Yes. Someone said Ms. Lynn? Okay, I guess not. All right, read the next sec section from it would be fatal for the nation to overlook the urgency of the moment. And you were supposed to end with reading the whirlwind of, whirlwind of revolt will continue to shake the foundations of our nation until the bright day of justice emerges. Here, what does Dr. King use? What metaphors? Mihad. Me had? Yes, Chris. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Number 10? Yes, number 10. He says that uh, freedom is an autumn and uh, that like criticism and our summer. The sweltering summer? Yes. Sam, can you help? Yes, Ms. Lynn. What did uh, you write? The first one uh, was sweltering summer of the Negroes legitimate discontent. And this compared the duration of the Negroes discontent with the hot uh, summer. And the yes. second one is an invigorating autumn of freedom and equality. And this comparing the change of the season to the change of uh, the change to equality or freedom. Yes, exactly right. Thank you, Sama. You're welcome. Okay, number 11, read from, but there is something that I must say through we cannot walk alone. Okay, what metaphors does Dr. King use here in this part of the speech? Uh, Ahmed Uta. Yes, miss. Uh, question number 11. Number 11. Uh, the metaphors were uh, palace of justice and thirst for freedom and not allowed the creative process to ignorate in physical violence. Okay, anyone have anything different? Different, but make it you have something different. Miss, I wrote the Palace of Justice and uh, uh, the Cup of Bitterness and Meter and the Majestic Height of Meeting okay. Physical Force. Okay, all right. Uh, the next one. You were supposed to read, and as we walk, we must make the pledge through justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. Where do you think this quote came from, Mahi? The Bible. Okay, what, what, what verse or what book do you know? No. Does anyone know? Nor? Yes, miss. Do you know? No, I don't know. Okay, please lower your hands after someone else uh, answers. If you don't know the answer, please okay. don't raise your hand. Sama? Sam, did, did you answer that part? Yes, question 12, right? Yes. The Bible. Yes, but, okay, I didn't know. I thought maybe someone would look up the verse in the Bible and say which one it was. Farah uh, No, I was also gonna say the Bible. Okay. All right, number 13. 
Miss, Read I the paragraph. I'm sorry. I know it's this. No, what uh, offered? I, I think it's called Amos uh, 524. Uh, yes, thank you so much for doing that. Okay. All right, number 13. I am not unmindful. I am not unmindful all the way to let us not wallow in the valley of despair. I say to you today, my friends. Uh, Bumika. Uh, yes, question number 13. Bumika, we can't hear you. Question number 13. Miss, can you hear me? Uh, no. Miss, can you hear me now? Farah, my love, can you answer? Uh, yes. Uh, forms of persecu persecution winds of, and winds of police brutality and valley of despair. Okay, anyone have anything to add to it? Okay. Number 14. And so even though we face the difficulties of today, all the way to that all men are created equal, Abu Talib, where did uh, this quote come from? Uh, Declaration of Independence. Yes, okay. Number 14, I have a dream that one day on the Red Hills of Georgia to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. What does interposition and nullification mean in this context? Uh, Yusuf Afila. What does interposition mean? There are examples of how the governor of Alabama is used to give African American citizens rights. Okay, but what does the word itself mean? because you have to know what it means in order to understand it. So tell us Yusuf, what, what is the definition of those words? Bamika? Can you hear me? We can barely hear you. Your voice is extremely low. Can you hear me like this? Miss Lynn, yeah. I know. Go ahead. Interposition means... Uh, inter I don't know if anyone can tell Bumika that we cannot hear her well enough. Farah Hussam, go ahead and answer. Uh, okay. Interposition means the action of interposing someone or something. Okay, and what does interposing mean? Um, interposing mean uh, to place or insert between one thing uh, and another. Say it one more time louder, Farah. Farah. Okay, uh, interposing means to place or insert between one thing and another. Okay, and what about nullification? And uh, notification. Um. Who can tell me what notification means? Nor do you know? Yes, miss. What does it mean? means to refuse a federal law by the state. Yes. It, have you ever heard that uh, he will nullify the contract? In other words, he will cancel it. Okay. So oh. now Yusuf, listen to me or anyone else, not just Yusuf. You also not only have to know how this is used in the speech, but if you don't know the meanings of these words, then you don't actually know how or why they are used in the speech. 
And when you have a word like, uh, let's say nullification, okay? You should know what the word null means. I mean, you're in high school, you're in grade nine. To null comes from the nullify. It means to cancel something. Interposition. Okay, you can't just say, if you don't know what it means, use the word interposing. You have to go all the way back to the uh, base word, interpose, and look that up. Does everyone understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yes, Ms. Lynn. Okay. Please start using your dictionary and look some of these words up. You're, on your quiz, you're going to have words that you're going to have to define that's in the speech. So you need to get used to using dictionaries, guys, anytime you need them. Okay, the next one, 16. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted all the way through knowing that we will be free one day. Where did this quote come from? And what metaphors does Dr. King use? Uh, Hannah Yasser. It came from the Bible that's called Isaiah. Okay. Hello, it came Muslim? from the book in the Bible called Isaiah. Okay, and what metaphors are used? Yes. Um, he uses the, uh, uh, I wrote, um, uh, Hello? Yes. Hello? Then? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, I wrote uh, the giant. Hello? Hello? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, my internet is so bad. It's okay. Hello, Miss Lynn. Miss Lynn. Hi. Hi, Miss Anna. I think Anna is having a slight problem. Samma, will you tell us which metaphors did Dr. King use here? Uh, okay, the first one, uh, Mountain of Despair, um, and Beautiful Symphony of Brotherhood. And this is comparing their, the African Americans' life after they gained their rights right. as a symphony of instruments um, playing together. Yes, thank you, Sama. Hannah, can you hear me? Hannah? <laughs> I think Hannah went out in space wellness. Okay, now you were, for the last part, 16, I mean, uh, 18 through 22, of course, you were supposed to read the rest of the speech. Uh, what phrase does Dr. King repeat in this section? Uh, Faram uh, Malam. Uh, let freedom ring. Let freedom ring, exactly right. Uh, Adam, where do you think the first quote mm -hmm. came from? Um, I know one second. Uh, it came from a national anthem. I can't hear you, Adam. It came from a national anthem. The national anthem, okay. Uh, Uta, where do you think, I'm, I'm sorry, what is a Negro spiritual? It's a song that's sung by the slaves. Yes, it was a song that the slaves sang, and that these songs are now sung in many, many, many black churches, okay? Who can tell me, uh, Bamika, what does the ending mean? Yes. That the African Americans will have equal rights. Okay, at the end of the yes, speech. Can you hear me? At the very end of the speech, yes. when he keeps repeating uh, God Almighty, remember at the very end, free at last? Uh, yes. Uh, can, you read, uh, can you read that part, Bamika? One second, I'll open the book. Just give me one second. The last part? Yes, the very end. Miss, can you tell me what page is the story? I don't know. I don't have the page in front of me. Can anyone I tell us? I think it's 603. 
The it's very okay. last part of the speech. Okay. Free uh, at I last. Found I found it. Who said they found it? Uh, me. <laughs> One second. <laughs> Um, yes, and when this happens, and wait, wait, uh, when, when what happens? Uh, you want me to read from the beginning? I want you to or... read right above it and tell me when what happens. Okay. Uh, let feed. Uh, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring. And when this happens, and when we allow freedom to ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in words of the old Negro spiritual. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Okay, so what does this ending mean? Uh, that when that, everyone... Uh, when all... Uh, when, that, when the Black people are counted... Uh, uh, free in the whole world, every part of the world, and free at last, free at last, that the uh, African Americans got their freedom. Right. And the reason he names all of these states, he doesn't just literally mean those particular states. Yes, they're included. He means but like, like you, uh, the whole but like Bumika just said, he means the whole world and not just African Americans in this day. Anyone that is uh, going through any kind of racism, okay? When you stand up together and you join hands together, that's when the African-American and everyone else will be free, okay? What did you understand from this first reading? Who can tell me what they understood? Or who can tell me what they understood from the speech? I want you to stop and think about it. In your heart, what did you understand? Not just in a book sense, okay? And tell me something that it made you maybe look or think at in a different way about as far as racism or discrimination. And it doesn't have to be color. It could be, it could be anything. Farah Mala. Uh, yes, uh, maybe the black people's rights are not uh, like they don't have all the rights right now. But someday they will have all the rights, and King uh, King's dream will be achieved, and all people will be equal. Okay, but what what message did you get from reading this speech? not just about the African-American people. This, me uh, this speech should have sent a message to everyone that reads it. Did it send you any kind of message? Can I answer? I'm asking Farah first. Okay. I, Hannah, I know you have an answer, baby. Believe me, I promise, I know. Farah, did you get a message from the speech? I don't know. Um, no. Okay, Hannah Hanning, tell us what your message was. I understood that uh, uh, black people are are also humans, like white people. There's no difference. Exactly. They have they have uh, a soul and a heart, and they feel like us. There's no problem. It is they are, they are humans like us. And they have to take the equal. I keep cutting you off. I'm sorry, Hannah, but you're exactly right. Black people are just like us. Not only black people, people of your own race that you may, maybe you didn't dis uh, discriminate against anyone, but let me tell you something. 
we are all human. And at one time or another, I'd be willing to say that I bet every single one of you, including myself, at one time we have discriminated against someone. Do you agree, agree or disagree? If you disagree, raise your hand. I'd be curious to hear your uh, answer. So everyone agrees that at one time or another, we have all discriminated against someone. Yes, of course. Hannah, yes, sir. Uh, from young, my mother has always taught me like to not discriminate. So I am always like very like, sensitive about this stuff. So uh, like whenever I'm around people that like they uh, always like tell me we've been like uh, through a lot of stuff. I'm always very I, I like I'm ne I never discriminated against anyone. I I think Hannah, I, I understand what you're saying, and I think we all agree. Most of us have been taught by our parents we are never supposed to discriminate against anyone. But I, can someone give me a little example of maybe when we discriminate against someone and we do not even realize that we are doing it on a normal daily basis? Um, can I answer? Sure. Um, judging people with how they look without knowing them. Bravo. Have you never ever said, oh, she is not cute. In fact, she is ugly. Right or wrong? Yeah. How many? Never. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> no. How many? No, okay, so Bumika, give me like, another example. Uh, when the, there are people that are poor, and uh, people discriminate them and treat them different than us just because they cannot afford doing something. Yes, you talk down, not you, I don't mean you personally, I mean people talk down to them. They even look down at them physically. I've seen that and many treat, times, and okay. treat them like they are nothing. That, like yes, they, they treat them they like, uh, if you want. notice how they ever uh, just sometimes even walk past a poor person. They just kind of brush them off. You understand? Yes. How many times, let me ask you this. Uta, help me out. Have you ever called anybody stupid? Sometimes. Me too, me too. I mean, we're being honest here, of course. But uh, think... mostly as a way of joking. Not, uh... Yes, but my point is this. And um, I agree with you, uh, Ahmed, 100%. We don't intentionally mean to throw racism at someone or to discriminate against them. But some of these words are so easy to, for us to come by because it's become a habit to say them. You will see now, uh, I'm sure many of you listen to rap music, and you see a lot of, especially black entertainers, in their music, they use the word nigger, right? Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now, do they do they mean it in a discrimin discriminatory way? No. Okay. My point is, it's become so normal if you want Every to say day. that, of using these kind of words that even black people in their music call themselves niggas, right? Yes. I'm sure you would not connect it with yes. a Martin Luther King speech, but believe me, if you stop and think about it, there is a connection. In fact, I tried to find uh, Dr. Martin Luther King's speech on YouTube because there was a rapper that did his speech while he rapped the speech, okay? It was really very cool, the coolest speech I've ever heard in my life. And I don't know why I had it last year and now I could not find it on YouTube, all right? But I really wanted you to hear it even before you heard the actual speech by Dr. King. 
Okay, I wanted to show you my, my point of doing it that way was to show you that a speech does not always have to be boring. And sometimes you learn a lot. This speech I've always felt, and maybe you feel different, and you are entitled to that right. That's your right. Uh, maybe you didn't get as much out of this speech as me or maybe someone else did. Maybe you got more than me, okay? But I think it is a speech that you will probably always remember, or at least when someone brings up, I have a dream, you will immediately connect to it, okay? Is there anyone uh, one that maybe learned something from the speech that you did not know before? So everybody knew everything. Wow, great. All right, does anyone want to add anything to today's lesson? Did any, everyone understand today's lesson? Yes. Uh, yes, but I just wanted to ask about the, yeah. the homework. I'm sorry. Uh, do you have any homework today? Yes, I posted the homework yesterday. I put a message on Facebook. Uh, okay, thank you. I said that we would take, since you did, do y'all read? I said since you were doing the guided reading sheet for last night's homework, that we would put the rest of the week's homework a day behind. For example, today your homework should have been chapter 16, but instead you'll do chapter 15. Does everyone understand? Miss? Yes. We can send, we can send the homework yes. in this list, yes? Yes. The homework okay. Yes. You need to start sending it. If I, if I were you, I would start sending it today, and I'm going to tell you why. Sunday, don't come to crying to me as a message doing it. Sunday, all of your homework has to go there. It can no longer go to any emails, Facebook, Messenger. If I were you, I would start sending today's homework there just so you can get used to it. Okay, thanks, Ms. Lind. You're welcome. All right, any other yeah, questions? Ms. Lind? Yes. Yes, excuse me. Yes, I wanted to ask also about the SMS because like before, uh, I, uh, you told me to send like my homeworks on Yahoo because uh, I have a problem with my Gmail. So uh, can I resend them on uh, SMS? Because yes. Yes. Yes, thank you. Thank and you. listen to me, everyone. If you have problems, on SMS, what are you going to do? Contact Mr. Heiser. Thank you. <laughs> I can't believe it took that long for two people to answer. I told you yesterday, send a message to Mr. Heitham and explain to him what kind of problem you're having. That's all you have to do, okay? All right, any more questions? Yes, Ms. Lynn. Yes. Uh, I will send my, my assignment on SMS, but uh, you should put for us the um, something on SMS for, uh, assignment oh, yes, for yes. us to send it. Yes, you, you should post that uh, we have a homework, for example, uh, um, chapter 15 comprehension. I should put what? It's a, an assignment, put, an assignment. Yes, in assignments, uh, you should put like uh, the ho uh, every day the homework, uh, the homework we have, for example, uh, chapter 15 comprehension. Um, for example, I have a dream, uh, anything. It's on your weekly schedule. And it's Ms. in assignments. Miss, they didn't search term three. Huh? Yes, they're already there. I saw them yesterday. They are, yes, they, they are, are there. there. Yes. What do you Thanks mean I have to I put thought... it on there? Guys, listen to me and I... stop talking. What do you mean I have to put it on SMS? Everything's there. Yes, miss. Uh, we open term two. We, we do not open term three. For you to, uh, for you to thing, give an assignment, there has to the be only... one. To... Stop talking. The only thing different this week is that I gave you the opportunity to have an extra day to do homework. I could have made you do all the 